What's going on everybody? Justin here with Everything Aquarium back with another video. I know it's been a while guys. Been working like crazy, crazy hours. Um, next week I gotta go on the night shift which is 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. So that's gonna be a crappy schedule but uh, I'm gonna try to do what I can and get these videos out. It's been a couple weeks, probably going on three weeks now. Um, like I said, I've just been super busy, been traveling with work and whatnot, so it's been difficult. Uh, and I've definitely been lacking in the fish room, so uh, if there's anything that looks a little off, uh, don't be too offended. I just have been really busy, like I said. Anyways, uh, today's video is going to be more vlog style. I'm going to do kind of a, I guess, a tutorial in the beginning. I'm going to show you guys how to transfer fry into a bigger tank, I guess. Set up a new fry tank. Uh, for cichlid fry, you could call it. They're in a, that two and a half gallon right now. I don't know if I've ever even showed you those. Um, anyways, I got some fry. They're in a two and a half gallon. I'm gonna transfer them over to that Imagitarium 6.8 gallon cube. So just a little bit more space. Um, and I'm gonna put a sponge filter in there and a heater and just just the basic stuff, you know, bare bottom, all that. I uh, just want to give them some more room. Um, so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna go around and show you some of the tanks, give you a quick update on the stuff. Um, I gotta top them off. Uh, I'll, well, I'll show you before I top them off. One's really low because it's got an open top. Um, I'm actually using that 14 gallon cube. If you remember, I bought that a while back and built a stand for it and never really did anything with it. But now I'm using it just for a couple goldfish and some plants that I wanted to test a light out on, basically, on that tank. And uh, that's doing well. Just needs some water top off, like I said. Um, other than that, everything's pretty good. So uh, yeah, I'm going to start with this and then I'll show you guys uh, all the tanks and what they're looking like here in a couple minutes. So stay tuned, enjoy the video, thanks for watching. Alright guys, so this is where we're at with the fry. As you can see, they're getting to a good size in there, so I got to move them out and uh, get them into a bigger tank where they can have more room and I can eventually add fry into here because I have some in the tumbler right now. Um, and unfortunately I just lost my breeding female for some reason when I stripped her. She was fine, and then I put her back in the tank, and I came out the next morning, and she was laying on the floor. So, I don't know if she was just super stressed out and just jumped out. I don't know. Um, but I lost her, but I still got a couple breeding females in there. Um, and males, obviously. So, uh, yeah, let's get this mess out of the way of different crap up here. And uh, I'm going to clean out that 6.8 gallon cube. And then we're going to flip these guys right into there, take everything from here, put it right into there. And uh, we'll call it that. Uh, call it a day on that I should say um, here I'll show you this too real quick this is going crazy nothing really too different in here besides um, lack of maintenance uh, the pogo stem has gone crazy I have another blackbeard algae breakout of course so that's another battle in itself really sucks I gotta refill my CO2 tank on here as you can see it's really really low probably can't see any bubbles at all but uh, let's take care of this real quick and then I'll show you what else is going on. Alright guys, here we go. Got it cleaned out. From that to that. Now we're going to take some water after I get a good read on this thermometer here. Uh, match temperature, fill that up. Swap over the equipment. And then, last but not least, drain some of this water out. Grab those fish, throw them into there, and then that should be, uh, that should be good. Got to grab the lid and throw it on there. The light's not too important to me. Um, that's just for viewing aspects. The hornwort doesn't even have a problem without the light. It gets light from these other tanks. So, yeah, let me fill that water up real quick, get the tank set up, and then I will show you then. All right, guys, and here we are. Just like that, everything's filled up. Heater, sponge filter, hornwort, PVC pipe, and the light all put in the tank. The fish are swimming back there. Of course they're a little stressed out right now because I just moved them. A lot of them got their gills puffed up but uh, that's alright because they're going to get used to it here soon and turn these lights off and then they'll be uh, they'll be good to go. Here comes a little guy swimming up right there if you can see him. Um, so what these are is I think they're a hybrid mix between, um, oh, what do I want to call them, ruby green and I, I would say probably the dragon blood honestly which might be a cool looking fish once it gets older um so i guess we'll just have to wait and see to be exact exactly sure um got a couple albinos in there as well but as you can see most of them are that greenish uh color right now 
which uh, can never be positive when they're fry. But uh, yeah, so that's that. You can see them all back there behind the filter underneath the heater. I'm going to turn the lights off, let this tank do its thing, and then we'll come back and look at it sometime in the near future. And uh, hopefully this tank will do well. I'm glad I got them out of that smaller tank. They deserve to be in a little bit of a bigger tank. So uh, hopefully this will work out for them. And uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys posted on this. Let's go check out some other tanks that you haven't seen in a while. All right, guys, here's a 75 gallon looking absolutely filthy because I've been, like I said, lacking on maintenance. As you can tell, it's uh, a big mess in there. I just stirred it up too when I put some, or took some hornwort out. So now I have all those little pieces floating around everywhere. Um, but what I'm gonna do right now, um, uh, nothing crazy. I'm gonna remove the pre-filters because they're all clogged up. I'm not getting much, getting much filter flow at all. And uh, I'm going to show you a cool little trick. Um, is when you pull those out, if you don't want to make a, a super nasty mess, you can always take a bag like this, put it underneath the filter, uh, the pre-filter while it's underwater, and remove it that way so nothing falls back into the water column that's already attached to that. Because uh, that's the point. We want to remove all that, all that crap that's uh, in those pre-filters, and you don't want it to. Uh, fall back into the water column as you're removing it so you put that bag under there and it just contains all of the all the poo and goo and whatnot um, so right now to get rid of all of this I really don't have much options I could sit in there and do it with a net and you know wave it back and forth which I might do for a little bit but uh, honestly I'm just gonna let that clear up let these pre filters take care of that once I clean them out they'll get clogged back up with it again and I'll do the same process so eventually it's all removed because um, that's mostly what's what's clogging it up as you can see back there they're well kind of hard to tell but they're they're imploded basically uh they're squeezed really tight because they can't get any more flow out of them so i gotta move those rinse them out put them back in and that's that so uh i'm gonna do that real quick and then we're gonna move on to another tank i'm gonna pop open my lid very carefully bag in there kind of get some water in there like that and I can bring it down put it underneath of the pre-filter if I can get it So, you know, actually, I'm going to turn my equipment off real quick. And as you can see, perfectly contained, just like that. And then I'll do the same with the next one, rinse it out, put it back in, turn everything back on, and that's it. All right, guys, we just finished up with that 75. Here we are over at the shrimp tank. Um, as you can see, the water level's a little bit low. Uh, I'm gonna top off everything after this video. I just wanna get this video made so I can have it posted before the time I'm supposed to have it posted. Anyways, thriving, of course. Water's crystal clear. Millions of shrimp in here. Still plenty of babies being born, probably almost every day. Uh, yeah, this tank is, is packed with shrimp. Probably, I'd say at least 150, 200 shrimp. Somewhere around there. Some are so small it's hard to see, but some are, you know, like that. Some are fully grown. Some are actually pretty big. As you can see, like that one on the filter back there is pretty good size. Um, they're hard to tell, but, you know, that one's got eggs right there. Oh, let's see. There's a black one that's got eggs. They all have eggs. All the females have eggs when they when they can. Whenever they can, they have eggs. It's not a question, you know. Um, they eat up a lot of the plants, which that's all right. I've just kind of been letting them do its own thing. Kind of a natural tank here. They eat whatever they can, whatever they want, and it doesn't bother me. Um, but yeah, nothing really has changed with that tank. The snails are still alive. I got two nerite snails in there. One's right there and then uh well actually i don't know where the other one is hang on a second here just looking over there i thought i might have seen a dead shrimp but i don't think so 
Maybe. I don't know. Let me go over there and look. See if we can't move it around and see if that one's dead or not. I'm going to assume it is because it looks... Yep, that one's definitely dead. Uh, I'm going to say... Let me have a look. It's hard to tell. Doesn't look like they had any parasites or anything because all the other ones are pretty healthy. But I'm going to consider that to be just an old age death because it's a pretty large shrimp. And um, yeah, I'm just going to go with that's old age. Natural causes. Nothing appears to be too wrong with it. Hard to tell at this point because it's been a little bit chewed up, but anyways, yeah. We'll just go with natural causes. Then honestly, this is the first shrimp of this size, of any size that I've lost. One was by mistake when I was taking some out. I accidentally dropped one and I never found it. Um, so yeah, this is the first shrimp I've really lost out of this tank that I can say with confidence is most likely natural cause. Um, but anyways, guys, yeah, that's it with the shrimp tank. Let's move on to something else. All right, guys. All right, here's the 14 gallon. Um, as you can see, it's pretty lousy. <laughs> Not gonna lie, uh, I got a good uh, good gap of water there. But I need to fill up, and it's just got some random plants that have overgrown, and I decided to propagate them in this tank, and got a couple goldfish in there, and that's really it, honestly. This tank has really no interesting aspect to it. It's disgusting, honestly. Um, but that's just because, like I said, I haven't been maintaining things like I should have should have been lately. And, uh, yeah, so this is where it's got me nice and, uh, nice and algaed up. But, yeah, that's really it. I just got some sand in there and pogo stem and money wart, some rotalamacondra indica or whatever it is. A couple other plants that I just propagated from that water box over there. And uh, since I'm here, I'll just move right over to the cichlid tank. As you can see, it's bustling with life, literally. Got uh, got that filled up with eggs and babies that are currently hatched. A couple different uh, litters in there. And all the fish, of course, are doing well. Needs a good algae scrape because I don't have anything in here that's cleaning it, so... Needs good algae scrape, but other than that, everything's doing well, man. Super he super healthy, super fat. Some of these, where are they at? Ruby greens is what I'm calling them, or, or huge, like that one back there, kind of behind that. Yeah, you see his blue mouth there. He's green, and he's he's giant. I mean, his mouth, he looks like a largemouth bass, honestly. Or, or a smallmouth bass, I would say. But yeah, he's, he's super healthy. Every Everybody's healthy in here. The Imbuna, the Obies, the Rubies, the... Yellow Sunshine, which is supposed to be that guy right there. Um, I still got some runts, like that one up there. Can't believe how small he still is. He's never really grown at all. Uh, what else? Got to pick this catfish in here still. All three of them are doing good. They like to live under that rock. Let me see if I can get that. There he is. That dragon's blood out. Super beautiful fish. Looking good, as always. Uh, I got a couple more showing some color like that one behind the heater there. He's starting to color up. Might be a female though. Um, and yeah, that's really it with this tank. Nothing else has changed. Just been uh, feeding and maintaining as much as I can, I should say. But yeah, that's pretty much everything in the fish room that's been going on. Got to get back to work on this guy here soon. Right after this video. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. More content coming soon. This is uh, what I'm working with for now and what I can do. So thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, like the video, share a comment, whatever you want to do. And uh, I'll see you guys soon.